live from Chicago, this is Bruce Dumont with our Beyond the Beltway analysis of national politics featuring occasional injections of rumor and innuendo all offered up by our panel of political insiders, pundits, power brokers, public servants, professors, and most importantly, plain-speaking Americans from coast to coast. Tonight featuring commentary by Democrat Peter Hanna, Republican Doug Ibendahl, Republican Nationalist Jennifer Nevins, and Democrat Coco Sudek. Our program tonight coming to you from our home base at the Museum of Broadcast Communications in Chicago, the Paul and Angel Harvey Radio Studio. Nice to have you with us. Toll-free lines open at 1-800-723-8289. That's 1-800-723-8289. If you'd like to email me a comment, it's Bruce Duma. I'm sorry, Beyond the Beltway, 2019 at gmail.com. If you want to tweet me a comment, it's at Dumo, at D-U-M-O. And, of course, you can join us on our website, beyondthebeltway.com. It is not only this broadcast, but if you ever miss it, it's always there for a long, long time. And, of course, we are live on Facebook, and we are live on uh, uh, YouTube around the world. So nice to have you with us. Again, another full uh, two hours of uh, political conversation this evening. We've got a new guest, a maiden maker, her maiden voyage. It's about the third week in a row we welcome a newbie here. And. And uh, Coco Sodok, nice to have you with us. Uh, you're a Democrat, uh, a liberal Democrat. And I want to begin by asking you the question that I think a lot of people are discussing right now. We're dealing with revelations at the national level of two uh, whistleblowers who have, uh, who have offered te testimony uh, that Donald Trump did something that they think was in, uh, illegal and certainly improper. Do you believe conceptually do you agree that whistleblowers, not just this one, but maybe all of them, should whistleblowers be forced to come forward? Well, come forward in what way? Do you mean come forward? In a forward? public way, so we would know um, who they are. You know, I, I think it depends. I think that there are ways of protecting whistleblowers. Whistleblowers are critical to ferreting out the truth, particularly in climates like the one we've got under Trump, mm -hmm. which is one of a vengeance and cruelty, and so it's important that we protect the identity of this, these whistleblowers so that they, they're not subject to repercussion. I mean, that's a that's the whole point of okay. of having whistleblower protection. But conceptually, not not always. Y you don't say we absolutely have to do it in all cases. You think this is a an exten this is an extenuating. I think this is an extenuating circumstance. Okay. Jennifer Nevins, do whistleblowers, mm -hmm. generally speaking, not not this one we're talking or these mm -hmm. that we're talking right now. Do you believe that whistleblowers should come forward? Well, that used to be the rule, right, before it was changed. Uh, pretty recently, actually, uh, they need to get to the bottom of that. Why, two weeks before this event happened, the rules were changed, where you did at least have to go on record as far as who you were. And I think that that's important because we live in an era where anonymous charges um, are so easily made. And it is really important that if someone's going to make something, a charge like this that is very consequential, that they're able to stand behind it and not cower behind um, anonymity. Okay, uh, Peter, uh, Hannah, you are an attorney. You also uh, teach at Illinois Kent College of Law. Mm -hmm. uh, as an attorney, uh, how do you come down on this issue? Um, I think whistleblower laws exist for a reason, and I think that people are generally cowed by the repercussions of being the ones to disseminate information that's unpopular um, in the corporate context, in the government context, and all sorts of contexts. I think they're really valuable, and I think you undermine sort of the impetus for people coming forward if you don't protect their identity. Uh, I mean, think back to obviously like the Watergate, you know, the Nixon tapes and, you know, Deep Throat. How long did it take for us to figure out who that person was? Um, I think if that person was being threatened by Nixon in a public way and called a traitor and a treasonous, you know, whatever, um, perhaps he wouldn't have come out. Um, so I, I think it's really important to protect whistleblowers under all circumstances. Doug Ibadal, you are also an attorney, a pro-Trump uh, Republican joining us. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, I, th I think, um, with all due respect, I'd say your, your question is a, a bit of a false dichotomy. Th th these, are, th these are not whistleblowers, as we normally understand the term, and I would argue that they don't even fit the definition of whistleblower um, under the United States Code. First of all, we only, we only know about one. The second one is sort of rumored, but we've got nothing from them. But, but more importantly, the, the, these, the, the, these so-called whistleblower reports are, they're, um, they're, they're superfluous now. They're meaningless. Once Donald Trump released, we, we have, Doug, we have Doug, the transcript. Doug, Doug, speak my question. Generally speaking, 
Do you support whistleblowers? Uh, 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 let's try to get away from this one because obviously everybody may have a different opinion on this whistleblower or whistleblowers. But I just want, generally speaking, I mean, have have whistleblowers come forward in the past with information, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, against Republicans or Democrats, that turned out to be good for the republic, in, in, information the public should know? In a, in, a, in a general case, yes, whistleblowers have protection. But the issue is, does the wh- so-called, and I'm using air quotes now, the whistleblower in this case, would they be, be subject to that? And it's, it's, it's really absurd. Rudy Giuliani is right. It's, it's, we're, we're actually even past a witch hunt. We're not even, it's not even proper to call this a witch hunt anymore because it, even the witches, the accused witches in the, in the Salem witch trials got to face their accusers and to, and to cross-examine them. Basic, even, even those, those uh, okay. alleged w- witches got the basics of due process okay. under the law L- in our let's, Constitution. Let, let's, let's come back to a point that you make back to you, Coco, and that is uh, should the president or any, anybody that's charged with anything, should they have a right to face their accuser? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely they should. And he'll have that chance in the impeachment trial. Mm-hmm. This is the investigation. This is the inquiry. There's no, there's no right to confront your accusers or witnesses against you in an investigation. Nobody gets to confront your, your accusers or, or people filing complaints against you when the police are investigating. And that's where we are in this moment. Do you agree with that? Jennifer. Here's the problem with that. It's not even an official inquiry yet. The Democrats didn't even want to get to a vote yet if it's an inquiry, but that doesn't stop them from issuing subpoenas. So what they want is they're trying to have it all. We want to subpoena you but and put you, but, you in but front. But do, do you agree with the point that Coco just mm-hmm. said, is that if there, if there, isn't, if there isn't an indictment yet, yeah. you don't have to come forward with their name. That, that comes later. Right. No, I don't have a problem with with that point. I have a problem with this point that the Democrats, it's closely related to what we're talking about here, the Democrats are subpoenaing people and saying, you have to come forward, you you must talk to us, but yet there is no formal inquiry. The press is calling it an inquiry, but there is no inquiry right now. So if you want to put your money where your mouth is, then people will comply with your subpoenas, but not until then. Peter, should there be a House vote up or down on continuing the inquiry? Um, I mean, I think that they don't need that to continue the inquiry, but I actually agree with Jennifer. They don't need it because of why? I mean, because I think the individual committees have the discretion to pursue the inquiry in the ways that they what see. What about fit, in the court of public opinion and, and politically? I mean, the, 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 in, the, in the Clinton case and in the Nixon case, the, the House voted and then the inquiries began. So yeah. why should this be different? Well, I mean, I think the inquiry is well underway. I think really what we're all talking about is when will they introduce articles of impeachment and actually pass them, which I think will happen relatively soon. But I actually agree with Jennifer that the Democrats have, you know, tried to have it both ways in in a lot of ways because it's a really delicate, fraught situation with implications for the 2020 election. And the last thing that you want to do is hand, you know, Donald Trump something that, you know, a lot of folks will just be able to, oh, he won, look, he, he acquitted, you know, like the Mueller report acquitted him. So I think they're walking a fine line, <laughs> very fine line. But again, <laughs> well, when we come back, uh, we'll continue our discussion. 1-800-723-8289. I'm Bruce Dumont from Coast to Coast and Border to Border and around the world at beyondthebeltway.com. Thanks for joining us tonight. A line is a powerful thing. It connects the global economy to your living room, cleaner air to stronger markets, factory floors to less crowded roads. Today's progress to tomorrow's promise. Norfolk Southern, one line, infinite possibilities. Hello. You know, these days, I'm often quoted as saying, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. People forget that I was the first technology president using the telegraph, T-mails as I like to call them, to communicate with my generals. Well, today, we are fighting a cybersecurity war, and our best defense is for folks to follow some of these tips when they're online. 
If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Hover your cursor over links to determine the true web address. Look for misspellings and poor grammar, which are warning signs of fraud. Be suspicious of emails requesting urgent action and never give away sensitive personal information. With malware for none, with cyber protection for all, this is your humble servant, Abraham Lincoln. Bruce Dumont back in Chicago. And uh, Coco, I want to ask you a question that uh, we, we addressed in the first segment, and that is, uh, where do you come down on whether or not the House should vote? Because at the, at the moment, uh, it's a talking point. It's the number one talking point of Republicans. Uh, why not give them their way on that, and what's the next point they're going to come back with? So it's, well, I, you know, on, look, on the I, issue of fairness or perceived fairness. I think that there's an enormous amount of fairness right now in that the committees are investigating, talking to witnesses. They're getting stonewalled by people associated with the Trump administration, which is absurd and, and unconstitutional and illegal and lawful. <coughs> Would I, do I think they should take a vote? Yeah, eventually I think they should take a vote. But the problem is they only have one, uh, they have one event on the docket right now, and that's the Ukraine conversation and all the proceedings around the Ukraine conversation. Mm -hmm. And there are so many more avenues to impeach this criminal, reckless, lawless, Ill illegitimate president wow. that I would like them to take a little bit more time and look at this so that the impeach the articles of impeachment read like the phone book. But the but the point is the people who agree with with, with, with the litany of uh, of comments about the president and there there are many there there's millions of them out there that agree with that. To, to to them, why don't you say, why why are we fighting an issue of whether or not we're going to vote? We're probably going to vote anyway. The, the national news media has basically said for the last month that the reason that Nancy Pelosi is not doing it is that she wants to save the rear end of 30 moderate Democrats. It's a political decision that she's making. It's not the decision, hey, let's let's uh, let's make this transparent. Let's get let's give the Republicans an opportunity to come in and and, and participate just as they did with Bill Clinton, just as they did with Richard Nixon. Let's do the same thing for them that we're doing now. I think the average American would say that's fair. And if the Democrats can get on, if they can eliminate the charge that they're unfair, then I think the litany of things they could go after would be can, would be can I ask you, So I, yes, I think response, it's a little premature. I actually think it's a little premature to vote on articles of impeachment because if you vote well, on impeachment, just the inquiry. Do, I'm talking about just well, but I don't I, see why 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 well, wait, should me, there me, be can a can I, can, I, can I talk on that? Look, yes, the, the, the U.S. Constitution is is as we know is does not have a lot of specifics on the procedures for for impeachment. Uh, it, it's you know talks about why and even that even that language is somewhat vague when you talk about high crimes and misdemeanors. But we do know, it's very clear from the, from the history, from the Constitutional Convention, the founders were very concerned about this, and it's very clear. And we also have past precedent, not just the history from the Constitutional Convention itself, but also past precedent, as you said, uh, Bruce, with, with Nixon, uh, uh, Clinton, and, and, and Johnson, for that matter, uh, much further back, that an impeachment, uh, impeachment is, ver is a very serious thing. And that before you do – that an inquiry is supposed to be – there's supposed to be um, some, some confidence that the American public have that, the, that, a, that an inquiry on impeachment, which is an extraordinary uh, remedy to remove the, the chief executive of the United States, that before we do that, there should be some confidence that, that the majority of uh, – that, that Americans, through their elective representatives, are on board with that, and the Democrats are not doing this. This thing is beyond a star chamber. It's a kangaroo court, that's and they're no, no, and they're, no, no, the, no. the executive branch but Doug, is not. But that's Doug, absurd. Doug, there's the, but there, what? There, Doug, there, there, there are. I you may forward. not acknowledge them, but, but there are tens of millions of people in this country right now who agree. Then with, take a vote. Then have why? the vote. That, that, that's then my, have that's the my vote. Can I, can I respond to this? Go, go. Look, look, look. The, I think the way Nancy Pelosi has handled this has been frustrating for me, but also sober and careful. <laughs> and, 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 and you may deride it 
<laughs> as a politic as nothing more but a, a series of political calculations. But she is operating in great sobriety as a steward <laughs> of the co- as a steward of the Constitution and taking this very slowly and very carefully. And the fact that it's sitting in judiciary and it's sitting in intelligence in those committees and 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 they're going step by step and methodically and and appropriately and carefully, it's premature to put this before you know, the see, House at words this words point. Jennifer want, Nevins. Absurd. Jennifer Nevins. The first thing I like to say is the idea, and Rahm Emanuel said this on a show I was on a few weeks ago, that this is they're being very judicious. The Democrats are being so judicious about it. They want to make sure that their ducks are all lined up because we want to be on the up and up. That is a load of crap. Representative Al Green said last year, if we don't impeach this president, He's going to get reelected. And so now we have a situation where 13 months out from the election, what we have is not Nancy Pelosi doing something where she's trying to be methodical. She's caught in a real hard place. She's got the AOC wing on one end who's threatening her, and I mean publicly, that you better do something about this situation. And then she's got her moderate caucus. And then she's got Joe Biden, who she knows is the only chance that they're going to retake that White House. So she's doing this against her better judgment. She doesn't want any part of it, and that's why she's slow walking it. That's really the truth. Truth situation. Peter Hannon, your response to that? I mean, we have a president who has openly solicited uh, foreign leaders to dig up and share dirt on his political opponent and their families for personal gain. Um, I could talk about Nancy Pelosi and Democratic strategy. We could all talk about that ad infinitum. The bottom line is there is a president who has certainly fulfilled the requirement of a high crime or misdemeanor many times over, and just because he double down on it and did it publicly doesn't kind of legitimize what happened before. But I do want to pick up on one thing you said about the Constitutional Convention. You know, the Federalist Papers and, and pretty much all documentation around that time doesn't actually say why they picked impeachment to have a two-thirds, you know, supermajority in the Senate. There's not, I mean, you can assume it was because they were worried there'd be loyalists or something to upset the president or whatever. But if you actually look at, you know, in Eng- England, you know, all it takes is the House of Lords, majority, I'm sorry, House of Commons, majority, House of Lords. Well, you know what? We had a we had a, revol- we had a revolution. No, I'm, I'm aware, but I'm, I'm just like giving England. you. I, I don't know what your no, point is. Like, uh, I don't know what your point is. If you let me talk, uh, maybe you'll understand it. Um, I think you'll find if you kind of dig back into history, you purport to understand, just like the U.S. Code from earlier that you said didn't meet the definition whistleblower or the U.S. Code. You'll find that you're speaking from ignorance, right? Because a lot of what we decided was predicated on this historical antecedent in England and elsewhere. So you may say, oh, it's really clear. But this I don't know what your point is. The, the, the point fact is, is this, the Constitution my point is says this. that you do need two-thirds of the Senate. you can chuckle Senate. and, like, spout nonsense. No, I don't understand you what your want. point I'll, is. If you let me talk, you'll hear it. The okay. point is simple. One moment, Bruce. point is simple. Okay. We have a president who is has legitimized and normalized lawlessness. And here we are, we'll four that, people, Peter. speaking okay. about... Nancy Pelosi strategizing to support 30 moderate Democrats. That's not what this is about. That's what Bruce was asking about. It is what it's about. You know what, you know, what it's about, like, bigger than beyond that way, bigger than everything. It's about the country and the fact that Republicans are being led by a criminal. Yes, I want to wait. That's I want to I wanna go on record. Oh, well, 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 Jennifer, you wanted to follow through on that. We can get to that argument, Peter, but that's not what Bruce was talking about. We are talking about process because process here is really important. And what we have is we have the Democrats trying to have it both ways. I think that that speaks to the issue, uh, and that's something that we have to talk about. I know, uh, I don't have to be a lawyer. I've got, I'm surrounded by lawyers right now, and you guys have the advantage where you can get into the minutia and I can't. But you don't need to be a lawyer to understand what's going on here. You guys have had four bites at the apple with this impeachment. The emoluments clause and his policies on the border, all kinds of things you want, guys have wanted to do. This is your last shot at it because we have an election, and that's the bottom line. Can I, 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 and the, by the way, l- let me ask. Do you believe that the impeachment process, let's assume that it let's assume that it goes to the Senate and everyone is assuming that the Republican Senate would not vote two-thirds to him to uh, to remove con- to convict him. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. yes. Is, okay. Now the question is, if we go through all that and the Senate votes and Trump is still there, from a political standpoint, is Donald Trump helped or hurt? by, let's say, the next nine months being dragged in the dirt? Uh, quick quick answers. Helped or hurt? Oh, he's, he's, he's helped tremendously. Help. Jennifer. Helped. He's devastated. Devastated. <laughs> hurt. Hurt. Tell us why he's devastated, in your view. Well, I think if the, if the House does the investigation yes. I- investigations now to build the case and show the public and the Senate 
exactly how lawless and and disreputable this it'll president be a long, is. It'll be a long list. It'll be a long list. And what it'll look like is it'll look like the Republicans didn't have the courage, the 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 stones, right, the testicles to actually do what they should do in their constitutional duty as senators. Okay. Now, reaction and just to that particular point. And as let's say it's all out there. This is yeah. this is well beyond the Ukraine call. Right. It's and a lot more stuff to deal with. And to that point, as that's all being brought out, what else is being brought out? All the criminality on the Democrat side. All of Joe Biden's activities, all of Hunter Biden's activities. By the way, Joe Biden doesn't want to talk about any of that, doesn't think he has to. Then we're going to get into all kinds of other side issues. We're going to talk about Ukraine and the election interference that was going on with Ukraine. So if they want to go down that road, we also have a road that we can go down. Okay, but are you are you going to would do you think the Republicans would go down that road if they're in a defensive position? I think they to want to go down the, the road. president. Do they yes. want to go down any of those yes, roads that 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 I are in the bill do. of particulars? I think they I do, know. and I think with so, Trey Gowdy on board, they definitely do. Well, so, okay. yes. I mean, I'm all for exposing all the corruption. Yeah, on both sides That's have right. it out. If Hunter right. Biden is some sort of treasonous. You know, whatever criminal, That's right. lock Doofus. him up, That's right. doofus, whatever. I, I, let's have it all out. But the thing is, and I think a lot of folks on the other side forget this, Hunter Biden um, isn't running for office. Hunter Biden, actually, if you if you know anything about the guy's life, it's a pretty troubled life. And I mean, he I wouldn't necessarily I mean, with all due respect to the Biden family and this person struggling through whatever he's struggling through. I mean, I wouldn't put him in a position of public trust um, or want him in a position of public trust. This isn't about Hunter Biden. I mean, again, I think. I think the Republicans have been, and the Trump people, the Trump folks, have been really good at sort of sleight of hand. Like, this is not about Hunter Biden or Joe Biden, who, you know, frankly, even in my view, isn't my preferred candidate. It is about someone using the immense and enormous power of the United States as, it, as someone in a position of public trust to gain personal benefit. Which well, Joe we're gonna, Biden we're gonna hear, we're gonna hear from the Republicans in just a moment, but I, I do wanna just follow up on one part of this, Peter. I think part of it is, now granted, the main story here is the president and, the, and, and what happened in Ukraine. But he has opened another uh, avenue or theater of war, if you will, and that is the wisdom, the confidence, the smarts of Joe Biden not knowing what his son was doing or his son not telling his father, the vice president, of what he was doing, which raises a very high level of impropriety, back shortly. With instant acceleration, electric cars are more fun to drive and more affordable than ever. Electric cars are here. Plug in to the present. Dallas, St. Louis, Nashville, Tuscaloosa. All major cities to feel the destruction caused by a direct hit from a tornado. Is Chicago next? It's not a question of if, but when, and the clock is ticking. Learn what to do now at ready.illinois.gov to become Tornado Ready. back in Chicago. We've got a great panel for you this week, and they're going to take a moment to introduce themselves, and we will begin with one of our Democrats, Peter Hanna. Hello, my name is Peter Hanna. I'm a professor of law at uh, Chicago Kent, where I teach privacy and cybersecurity. Um, I've been practicing law for, uh, for, I guess, 15 years. Um, I do a lot of constitutional law and advise policymakers and lawmakers on legislation and policy initiatives in Illinois and sometimes in D.C. And born in Egypt? Alexandria, Egypt. And you became a citizen when? Uh, it's still up in the air. No, I'm kidding. I'm a citizen <laughs> many, many, many years ago. You didn't swim it. We know no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely can't swim that far. Um, but yeah, no, my family immigrated from Egypt when I was a little boy. And uh, I guess we all, we all became citizens back in the and, 80s. And your your father doesn't, he still disagrees with you on politics. On a lot of stuff. But, you know, strangely enough, over the past like three or four months, I think it's been trending in what I believe to be the right direction. 
but I think you'd probably be a little bit more comfortable, like somewhere in between us, leaning on their side. <laughs> okay. Doug Ibendahl. Uh, I'm, I'm Doug Ibendahl. I'm originally a farm boy from southern Illinois, but I've been a lawyer in Chicago for 20-some years. Did you milk cows? No, we had beef. We had uh, Hereford uh, beef tough. cows. Um, and uh, so that's my real job. And then my, uh, on my, uh, my hobby, you can read my political stylings at uh, republicannewswatch.com. Oh, just real quick, I was also on the, I was on the Bush legal team for the 2000 recount in Florida, and um, I was in Broward County, Fort Lauderdale. I only mention that just, just, just to say that I actually have firsthand experience. I've seen what real election interference uh, looks like. I've, 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 I've okay. witnessed it firsthand. Yeah, remember the pregnant chads, I hanging remember, chads remember, and all that? So it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more serious than, okay. you know, a few, a few uh, awkwardly placed uh, Facebook ads from Russians. Coco Sudek, making her maiden voyage. Welcome, Coco. Thank you very much, Bruce. My name is Coco Sudek. I'm a business lawyer, and I specialize in helping people make things and money. Great things and money. Mm. Uh, go ahead, Jennifer Nevins. Yes. You just you, you reported uh, to your Facebook friends. This is your twenty first appearance on this program. It, it is actually. Oh, so it's is. been a. It has been a great two and a half years. Um, I actually came on Bruce's show in the wake of the RNC in 2016. I was a delegate for Trump. I am a nationalist conservative, and basically what that means is I have an America First agenda, just like our president does. And that applies to everyone who's here legally, regardless of national origin, race, creed, or anything else. So. Okay, during the break, Coco, you said you wanted to make a point on something we were discussing in the last segment. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Hunter Biden and, 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 um, and, and Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. So I don't actually think that Hunter Biden did anything wrong. I don't think that he profited mm -hmm. from his association. And I think that when, when Joe Biden, his, his interventions to have the prosecutor removed was, would have been bad for Burisma, the company where Joe Biden or sorry, where, where Hunter Biden sat as a consultant and director. That said, it's gross. It's gross that Hunter Biden held this position while he was vice president. I don't care if they didn't do anything wrong. The appearance of impropriety is enough. I'm a Democrat. I believe in good government. I believe in a, a duty of loyalty that people ought to have to the country. And to me, it is enough to be disqualifying. It, Joe Biden should absolutely not be the nominee for a number of reasons, but one of them is this ridiculous situation where his son had a position in a country in which he had the brief. Yeah, for fifty, and he was getting fifty thousand dollars a yeah. month. Yeah, and it's okay. gross. By the way, I, I want to congratulate you because you were the first person on on the the left side of our table. This is the third week in a row, or fourth, maybe fourth week in a row, where we've discussed this issue. You're the first one. Who sees something wrong with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've had very liberal panelists here, and they just said, well, they didn't see anything wrong with it. There was no appearance of impropriety. And I'm saying, how can you not say that? This is about the most obvious situation. And by the way, we should mention that Hunter Biden, uh, earlier today or late, late yesterday, he resigned from a similar position in China. There was another company that he was doing work for. He has resigned that, and he said that if his father is elected, he's going to do no more foreign business, which, again, is, is the case. But, uh, by the way, so I, I think that uh, if there are more Democrats, and, by the way, I think the Democrats that are most likely to agree with you, uh, Coco, are probably people who are for Bernie Sanders or for Elizabeth Warren. You think? So, uh, yeah, I think so. Because I just, I, I mean, I, I think any yeah. any Biden Democrat, I think uh, but wait, they wouldn't be true. But wait, uh, say that but wait, be. there's a, but there's a, but, but wait, you're making it sound like a bad thing. The reason why I'm a fan of Elizabeth Warren is because I believe in good government, oh, because no. I believe in a duty of loyalty, because I believe in noble public service that doesn't, also come right. bringing your family to, to do some yes. buck raking on your I name. Agree. Yeah. I agree. I, I totally how does, agree. How does, how does, does everybody agree with that? Well, I, I, have we reached a, a point yes, here? Yes, we do agree with it, but what I'm, what I'm trying to circle, Peter, I'm trying to square. Peter, you agree with that too? 
agree with the specific quote. Yeah, I do. Okay, so here we have a, yeah. here we have an agreement here. Well, th this what I'm trying to Good understand. Night, folks, we're done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to understand is is how the media or anyone else can say that there is doesn't look like anything was done wrong. Hunter Biden had absolutely, and the, and the New York Times said this back in September 26th in the story they ran. He had absolutely no experience with the Ukraine at all, none. So to say that he wasn't trading on his father's position as vice president right. and that that wasn't improper and that his father did not grease those wheels yeah. is it, it belies any common I, sense I, I think I think we all agree on that I agree with you that I don't think the national media has moved that part of the story perhaps they will mm -hmm. Susan Rice the former uh, uh, national security advisor to Barack Obama was on Fareed Zakari today and she was asked uh, the pointed question by Fareed uh, should the vice president have at least informed you of that and her response was, oh, that was, uh, that, that was public domain. Uh, she didn't say yes. She didn't say no. Of course not. She said, oh, that was in the public domain. And I'm trying to think of myself, why would Hunter Biden's position at Burisma, why would that be in the public domain? Right. She's the national security advisor. And they keep saying if he's a were private the vice citizen. President, it seems to me that you should have acknowledged, you should have said that to somebody. And, and she, she refused to... To, to take that position, she took the mm -hmm. namby pamby way out. So I, I think this is uh, it, right. it, it gets to it gets to old school. And if people want change, and they don't like the idea of Donald Trump and his family trading on the family name, they don't like it for the Bidens doing it the same way. And that's another reason why I think it's another nail in Joe Biden's uh, right. a political coffin. Absolutely. I think one thing that hopefully everyone could agree about coming out of this, it's a, a good thing, is that it shines a light on. I mean, the fact is Hunter Biden probably did nothing illegal. And that in and of itself right. is a problem. Right. It is a problem when someone can, I mean, if your name is Biden and your dad's in the Oval, o you know, in the Oval yep. Office like half the week, right. you're trading on the name. Yep, and I mean, the sure. fact is it's perfectly legal. And I mean, we have a bunch of Trump kids who have been trading on the name while in office, you know, no, no, wait, 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 you know, positions of power for family to advance yep, themselves and the their time. personal interests. And I think that needs to end. And I mean, don't get me started on the immense conflicts of interest of Ivanka, Jared, all these folks have who did not sufficiently kind of move their private stuff away from their public stuff. So, I mean, I don't want to make this like for like. I think what we need is actual change in the law that prevents any of this type of activity. There's, in the a, there's a, there's a, there's a that's quick a, a, question a, for you, a response, and I, then we got to take some calls. There's a big difference here. The, the Trump family was making, the Trump kids were making money before their father got into politics. Hunter Biden gets thrown out of the Navy, apparently over, a, over drugs. And then now he's making fifty or eighty thousand dollars a month from from Ukraine and 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 but also that's not from, quite also from China. That's, it's, 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 but that's it's, not quite accurate it's, about it's, the it's Trump It's kids. completely different. And, and and I also completely disagree with my fellow attorneys over here. This idea, that, oh, there's nothing more to see here. Oh, it's all legal. No, we, we don't know that's that for a fact. Know. There is there is well, plenty there is plenty to investigate. I want to I want to be on record here as the only lawyer out of three here that actually s that will will say on the record that it is not a crime for the President of the United States, who is our country's chief law enforcement officer, to ask and to, to fully investigate when he is presented with solid evidence of corruption, to go after that ag as aggressively as he can, he could and to even enlist FBI. other countries in he doing could have that. Asked the that FBI. is that is perfectly he legal. And any lawyer who would say that it's not, I have a big issue with. It. He could I, have I asked have the FBI. Statutes. Dude. Oh, cool. I got okay. seven statutes. Right. Simple. He so could have asked the FBI. Yeah, he could have got exactly. I mean, I mean I, who knows? Maybe you ask your own government, your own country's right. law enforcement. No, 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 wait, no wait a second. You guys, wait, 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 no, no, you wait. Hang on. This is a violation of this is a violation of many statutes including foreign corrupt practices act uh campaign it is because it's yes it was your word, it was it, it is because he was he was he was he was offering money or withholding no, money in False. exchange for a False. government Fact's action not in evidence. for False. a personal benefit False. that's an assumption that he withheld Doug, you money. must be a student of sean hannity because right. i mean your manner is it's a violation right of campaign point. finance law so because you guys are, uh, he you guys was are asking one for at a time one he was at a time he was one at a time he was asking he was asking for help from a foreign government with to his investigate own, corruption for his own political campaign no, no the false. thing is, if he 
really oh, look. Second. I'm going to say the crux one of second. this is w- what his intention was, right? You can't was just it? sit there and make things up and and, and the smear cr- the president of the United States. Oh no, yes I can because um, I am a voter do, and, and he's a criminal. Gonna, that's why you guys are going to lose. That's why you guys are going to lose. That's why we're going to find out. So look, look, look. Let's let's talk. Let's back up from the Ukraine thing. The other thing he asked the 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 head of Ukraine for was for him to validate this conspiracy theory that Ukraine was actually behind the intervention, the invasion of the DNC servers. That was crowd strike. He's for an investigation. That totally was crowd strike. And the reason and the reason why he did it was because it absolves Russia from yeah. the the be- uh, from the conclusion that Russia invaded our country to help Trump you know, win the so presidency. The, you know, and that's, that's what applause, folks. And we that's what the Senate told saying you're for good government, Doug, but now you don't want an investigation. Doug, Doug. I want Got to pause back shortly. The body, it is a work of art. An incredible... If you look hard enough, go off the beaten track far enough, you'll find an America teeming with the unusual, the odd, the downright strange. I'm Will Klinger, and I'm your guide on a package tour we like to call... Wild Travels. Join us on our weekly road trip to see America's most offbeat and unusual attractions. Wild Travels, available on your local PBS station, or it darn well should be. CSX moves forward. So do the rest of us. Bruce Dumont back. Folks, if you could have only been listening during the commercial breaks. It got very, very hot. It got very, very personal. So we're going to try to slow down a little bit. And let's go to calls because Kevin in Springfield, Illinois, he's been waiting a long time. Go ahead, Kevin. You're listening to us on Facebook Live tonight. Go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question for Jennifer Nevin. Sure. She claims that she's a Republican, a conservative. So my question is, why has she been on an attack? attacking strong conservatives here in Illinois. We already have a weak party as it is. And attacking strong conservative candidates that could possibly win and pick up some of these seats, congressional seats, Senate seats, things like that. Bumper in particular, a very strong conservative, Jeannie Ives. Okay. So what's going All right, on I'm going to gonna ask for a quick response to that only because we are a national show and I don't want to get involved in local politics. Jeannie Ives is a frequent guest on this show. Jennifer, you are a frequent guest on this yes. program. You disagree. So, but finish the point, but let's button it up and move on to another call. Okay, I guess what I'll say to that is I'm a conservative, but you'll note that I don't go out of my way to call myself a Republican. I criticize people from both sides of the aisle. This is a primary that we are in, and this is, I'll nationalize this, because what this gentleman's trying to do is talk about Illinois, and he wants to carry over a Facebook fight onto the air, which I'm not going to do. I will just say this. Anytime you have a primary, when it's a national primary or a local primary, that is the time for fighting. That is when you separate the wheat from the chaff. And some people get their panties in a bunch and cannot handle it, such as this individual, Kevin, who's calling up. They can't handle it, so what they do is they attack the messenger. It is time to critique, and I critique Republicans all the time, and they are just like liberals when they complain and and think that they're so high above it. So that is my response to Kevin. So that's would it. Would you my my quick follow up would, would you th- thanks very much, Kevin, for your call. Adios, my, Kevin. My, my, my quick my quick follow up to you is if Jeannie Ives won the primary. Mm-hmm. And if Jeannie Ives made it to Washington, would you agree or disagree that the, the potential for her to be a national leader of conservative Republicans would be significant? Yes. I, in fact, okay. I voted for Jeannie Ives against okay. Bruce Rauner. So Good. why he's bringing this up, I do not know. So. Well, that, 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 that's a question. There's a different opinion. But again, her, her yes. projectory, Absolutely. if she she's does. successful, yes. Could be very. There's a huge. lot of good things about Genius. Alan, yes. CGO in Chicago, our flagship. Go ahead. Okay, 
he's gone. Uh, Rodney in Oklahoma listening to us on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead, Rodney. Okay, this isn't Rodney. You've got Brian from Roselle. Okay, well, I thought we were like going to line comment. three uh, on Rodney. We're going we're gonna to come back to you in just a second, okay? We're okay. going to put you on hold. Let's go to line three, Rodney in Oklahoma. Yes, um, the problem that the president has is we've seen this M.O. before, and, and the, the people that aren't Kool-Aid drinkers, um, the people in the middle like myself, um, this is the same M.O. on everything the president has done uh, from the very beginning with the Mueller report. And, and that's the problem the Republicans and, and the, the guests that you have on now have uh, is that th this don't work anymore. And I, I just want to yeah. commend Rodney for actually, you know, being one of the folks in the middle who's looking at this stuff, you know, from a objective standpoint. And I agree. I think for a long time, the lies and sort of the manufactured reality that Trump has been so adept at, and, and that's the one thing that the guy is adept at, is manufacturing reality and, and, frankly, being a con artist. You know, the lies aren't working, and the lies aren't sticking. And the mountain of facts, you know, I, I wish it weren't true. I really do wish, because I think it's a shame for all of us as Americans to go through this. But I think the mountain of really, really irrefutable facts that show this man is lying, he's a criminal, He's reckless. He's dangerous for the country and the world. I think that mountain is going to become overwhelming soon. Can I, hope can I comment on that for a second? Yes, you can, and then we're going to move on to a different topic. The, uh, I think that uh, the thing about Trump for me is that it's so disappointing. He had a real chance to be actually a transformative president because he, um, you know, he basically for many years acted like a conservative Democrat in New York, and then he ran as a Republican, and he offended a lot of people, but he had a real chance to rise to the occasion as the president. And instead, he's been an absolute catastrophic embarrassment. You know, this is, oh see, this is, this is so typical. See, I actually, I actually feel and sorry. I actually feel sorry for my, my fellow panelists he, here he, on, he, on, he on the left. He could it, is, have, it, is, Doug, it is a wonderful Doug, time he, to be alive in America. He could and have. But the left has so much hate. They are just blinded by so much but, hate. But here's they're my actually, question They're about actually that. working against their own interests. Right. I mean, this impeachment okay. thing is going to be as big as a disaster for them, maybe bigger than their, than their, uh, than the their, than their Russian collusion I hate the destruction was. of our national I mean, they're making, they're making resources. I hate the destruction of, of our national resources. I hate the unnecessary deaths of people all over our cities <laughs> due to racial injustice. I hate yeah. the absurd over-incarceration rates. I hate foreign collusion. I hate using Those the Democrat power of the presidency. I hate Those filthy you filthy Democrat-run cities live in are Coco. terrible. You live I got in a question. Coco. I got a it's question. terrible. You live here, right? You live in Chicago? It's Coco. You chose to live here, right? I, Please. Here's the amazing thing. I'm talking about... There, people are getting typhoid and, and bubonic plague in these Democrat-run cities. Are you telling him to love or leave the guy who said it. He's saying our Democratic-run cities are terrible. Here's By all means. The, leave. So the thing... The question is... The question I have is... I will grant you we have we have hate for the president. It's true. I, I can't even. Well, it's obvious. The president. Tell no, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's obvious. There are reasons why we hate him. You're a hater. No, no, I'm not actually. Not at all. I root for everybody. This man has made me and many other people hate him. And here's the thing, okay? I can understand. You, I can understand that finish. you're mad about it, and why? I defend no, you. Where's your hate But come that's from? the question. Why do you, you don't, have so much You hate? don't actually understand. You don't actually care why. I'm listening. Why do you, why do you hate the president? I give you a litany of stuff, right? No, you, you, say, you just throw, you throw out insults. We've you got a pause. We've got a pause. We've got a pause. We've got a pause. Doug, Doug, you seem got a pause. So 1 800 723. We've got a pause. Democrats, we've got a pause too. 1 800 723 80 to an end. When we come back in hour number two, we're going to try something. We're going to try a little bit harder. Somebody talks, everybody listens, and then somebody else talks, and that person listens. So it's we're not. We're going to try it in. Yeah. Coco, we're going to try it in hour number two. Back shortly.
We depend on our drinking water supply daily, but where does that water come from? Your water provider encourages you to get to know your local water source so together we can protect and preserve it. Welcome to the world, 2116. You can fly across town in minutes or across the globe in under an hour. Whole communities are living on Mars and solar satellites provide Earth with unlimited clean power. In less than a century, Boeing took the world from seaplanes to space planes across the universe and beyond. And if you thought that was amazing, you just wait. Today, fresh fruits and vegetables will go from a field in California to a grocer in Miami. A bottle of beer from Eagle Pass will journey to a restaurant in Manhattan. A two by four in Oregon will find its way to a townhome in Denver. A hybrid will say goodbye to Detroit and hello to a showroom in Austin. While a steel beam will leave a mill in Illinois for a high rise in Phoenix. and a flat screen in China, we'll head to an electronic store in Memphis. Because today, as every day, wherever you find business, you'll find us.